Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. My name is Tim Rumsey. Joining me is Pastor David Salazar, and we look forward to studying today's lesson for Tuesday, June 11. The title of the lesson is Sustaining Families Through Seasons of Change. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, our lives are constantly changing. Some of those changes are small and some of them are large. No matter what change we may be going through right now, we ask that you would sustain us, that you would give us the experience with you, the faith that we need so that uh, we may experience your blessings through these times in our lives. Please uh, guide us with your Holy Spirit as we look at your word again today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, David, I have a question for you. Uh, sure. Have you ever been on a trip uh, at just the right time or a trip that is long enough that um, when you when you left the trip, it was one season, and then when you come back from the trip, it's another season? <laughs> yes. Uh, just, last, uh, just this past year, in January, I went from... Uh, um, from uh, the States to uh, New Zealand. And so um, here is winter, cold, and right over there, and it was hot and sunny. So yeah, that's one of example, okay. <laughs> a very different okay. change, you know. Now season. I'm glad you took that trip so you had something to say, because I realized as I was asking you, you live in Florida and there's no change, right? It's just always <laughs> exactly. hot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, brother. Oh, uh, Yeah, I, I took a trip. Uh, we were gone for about a month, uh, this spring, and it was very much winter in Missouri when we left. And by the time we came back, spring had definitely arrived. The grass was green. The leaves were starting on the trees. Um, and it's quite an experience. It, it takes a little bit of adjustment. Um, at least it did for me. You know, just your, your mind is used to seeing things one way, and now you, you come back and it's a different way. We're going to look sure. today at the story of Noah and his family. Uh, again, the title of our lesson is How Do We Sustain Our Families Through Seasons of Change? I cannot think of any family that went through a greater season of change than did Noah and his family as hmm. they came yep. out of that ark. <clears throat> it wasn't just a different season. It was a different world, wasn't it? Uh, Imagine that. Completely different. Com Rain, you know, no longer. Mm, yeah. Uh, same. The The environment was different. The landscape was different to the point where... You literally could not recognize uh, where in this world you were at. And so exactly. we're going to look today at, at what enabled Noah and his family um, to remain faithful to God uh, through this incredible experience that you know, none of us will ever have a, a, probably a change or an experience like this, um, but we can learn from their experience. Let's mm. go to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. We'll start with a, bio, a biblical description here of the world before the flood. This was in Noah's time. Keep in mind, Noah lived for 600 years before the flood. So uh, he was uh, an old man, I guess you would say, by the time the flood came, even though he had several hundred years to live after this. But what was the condition of the world uh, leading up to the flood? David, if you don't mind reading Genesis 6 verse 5. It says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Pretty bleak picture of the spiritual yes. condition of the world and, and quite frightening as well when you consider, um, and this is God's assessment, that every imagination of the thoughts of people's hearts was only evil continually. Now, in contrast to that, let's read Genesis 6, verse 9, and we'll find out why God chooses Noah and, by extension, Noah's family as well. It says, "There, these are the generations of Noah. Verse 6, verse 9, right? <clears throat> Noah was a Correct. just man and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. So there are several words here to describe Noah. He was a just man. Um, you know, David, what does it 
mean when the Bible says somebody is just? What is that indicating about them? Well, it really tells you the type of what drives them and the type of, um, I guess, I would say the character that they have, a character of justice, of l loving that which is right. And justice does not mean just, you know, trying to, 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 to uh, judge someone. I'm talking about the decide, decision in their lives to do what's right, to follow the Lord, Lord and his law and to, you know, uh, despise evil in their lives. So pretty much is that righteousness that comes from the Lord. Uh, a just person in the Bible is that is that person that has or follows the Lord and does righteously. Yeah, well, amen. You know, in his life. Absolutely. And this, this, of course, was Noah's experience. The exactly. Bible says he right. was also perfect in his generations. And, and I think this last description of Noah is, is probably the most telling. It says that he walked with God. With God. You know, there are not many people in the Bible that are described as walking with God. One of them was Enoch, and uh, he was translated. He never saw death. Another one was Noah, and he was selected to uh, be used through this whole, you know, story of the Ordeal, flood. That, right. Uh, huge changes. There's another group of people in Revelation that walk with God. They they follow the Lamb wherever He goes, and those are the hundred and forty four thousand that are sealed uh, at the very end of time. So not many. Examples, there's a few others, but there are not many people that the Bible says have walked with God. And um, this, of course, should be a goal and aspiration of every Christian to walk with God, to walk with Jesus, and to allow that relationship to grow closer and closer day by day, which will happen Amen. if we're spending time with Jesus, if we're walking with him. So, Amen. you know, very clearly, uh, Noah is... Uh, his goals are different than the rest of the world. His values are different than the rest of the world. And even though he's living within a culture that has completely rejected God, has rejected what is right, um, he has made a different decision, hasn't he? His, his decision mm -hmm. is to walk with God. Now, uh, let's jump ahead to uh, some verses later here. Genesis chapter 6, verses 14 through 16. These verses uh, recount God's instructions to Noah about how to build the ark. And uh, for time, we won't read all of those verses, but you know, God gives him the dimensions. He gives him the pr proportions. Uh, he even tells him, uh, Noah, after you've built the ark, coat it inside and outside with pitch. Uh, God's pretty detailed in how to uh, build the ark. Now, the, my next question then is, did Noah follow those instructions or did he, did he take them as a general guideline and then, you know, run with it and, and do it however he saw best? Well, you know, Tim, it's very important that we meditate upon this uh, concept of what it means uh, for us to be preparing for changes. Uh, as we all go through changes in life, uh, in the case of Noah, you have chosen a very good example. And that is that he is you know, going to, if he wants to remain faithful to the Lord and wants to save the life of himself and his family and those that Noah is preaching to, you know, he's not, you know, he's, he's not told that only you're going to be saved. You know, he has a mission and a, a, and a message and he has to do that. He has to preach and hopefully someone else will also join, you know, and be saved. Right. But regardless, he had to follow, like you mentioned, a specific instructions to the, you know, to details that only God uh, you know, could could really do. I mean, I, I don't know if Noah had a degree in engineering. Maybe he did. Uh, we're not sure. <laughs> but regardless, the engineering that any man could do uh, would not be enough for a flood. Only true. God's true wisdom of engineering could help. And even then, of course, we know that even God had to put his protection up by his angels. But had Noah been, you know, chose to do something that he thought would, you know, be the best way. Had he said, you know what, the Lord says this, but let me just cut, you know, do this my way. Had he done anything from, uh, you know, aside from following the specific instructions, that ark would not have, you know, sustained the, 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 the storm and perhaps he would have failed. Even his own faith would not maybe have sustained because he was not, you know, he could chose to follow something, you know, had he chosen to follow his own heart. So mm -hmm. that is why, you know, it is so important in the case of Noah for us to keep that in mind, that when God has given us instruction, 
because of his mercy, his love towards us in raising our families. We have, by the grace of God, uh, you know, an uh, 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 inspired word of spirit of prophecy that gives us specific instructions to many details in our lives. If we're not willing to accept them or, or listen to them, and we're not willing to accept the word of God, uh, the Bible, as our basis for our, you know, teaching our children, our families, then, you know, we cannot expect to really be, you know, receive the blessings that, that the Lord wants for our families. And that is why I believe, you know, it's very important. And like in the case of Noah and the case for us today in the last generation, the last time we're living in this earth, we are to really follow the instructions uh, with, of course, the grace of God to the best of our abilities. That's right. You know, Genesis 6 verse 22 says, Noah did, or according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Uh, so your mm. point is absolutely correct. Now, we've looked at two principles for sustaining families through seasons of change. The first is to have a relationship with the God who never changes, uh, walk with Amen. God. The second one is to, uh, through His, through God's strength, you know, align your life and obey to the best of your ability what God has shown you. And now a third principle is brought out in what happens to Noah and his family when they enter the ark. This is now in Genesis chapter 7. In verse 7, it says that Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Um, and then in verse 10, it says, And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Now, what was Noah doing? What was his family doing during those seven days between when they went into the ark and when the waters started? Kind of an interesting I, question, hmm. isn't it? Well, what were they doing there? <laughs> Most likely they were praying. I mean, you know, uh, I don't know, trying to, to to come, you know, to strengthen one another, saying, Lord, the Lord says the rain will come. We got to wait. Oh, you know, it has not come. I know doubt wanted to creep into their minds. I mean, just mm -hmm. as, as Satan has always done. But, you know, this is where faith, you grow in faith. You know, the Lord... And I believe Ronald was telling his children and his family, and when they were, you know, almost maybe giving ear to doubt, maybe the Lord will bring uh, their, to their mind, well, how did the animals come? We saw the word, you know, mm -hmm. that they closed, that, that big, huge gate that we made in this, you know, was closed by the hand of God. Surely God is with us, you know? So, and this is why it's so important for us to remember, you know, and, and keeping our minds fresh before our children how the Lord has led, how the Lord has given us, you know, uh, his blessing in the past and how w we can have certainty for the future if we continue, you know, to remember the promises of God and how he has led us thus far. Amen. Amen to that. So, you know, two important points, David, what you just uh, said at the end here, we must remember how God has led in the past and we also must be willing to wait as Noah did. And that can be difficult to do sometimes, but, um, developing that patience and that faith that enables us to wait when needed is another very important thing that uh, God can use to help sustain our families through seasons of change. Sometimes change mm -hmm. happens a lot faster than we want it to. And sometimes it doesn't happen quickly enough, you know, depending on what the situation is that's before us. But having this kind of trust in God where we are confident in his timing is also a huge aspect of what God wants to uh, develop within us. Well, speaking Amen. of timing, uh, we're out of time again today. <laughs> um, it, it I'm not surprised, quickly, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, we thank you all for listening and joining us today. We hope you've been blessed by the time that we've spent in God's Word. And uh, we, of course, look forward to studying again with you tomorrow. If you've enjoy these lessons. If you have been blessed by uh, this deeper study of the Bible, we ask that you would share this with your friends, your family, anybody at church that you think might be interested. Uh, we would love to grow the family that is studying together here. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.